Before we start today's episode of Nerd Talk, this video is sponsored by my Discord server. Please go into the description and check it out. We'd love to have you. Got it? Good. Now, back to the video. Hello, nerds of the universe, and welcome to Nerd Talk. A lot has happened over the last few months, and there's a lot to cover. So this is yet another installment of Rapid Fire. Let's get into it. First on our list, we have The Book of Boba Fett. And with only three episodes having dropped as of my recording of this video, the reactions are mixed. The first episode, though a bit slow, really delivered, especially to Boba's journey and character. And of course, we got to see him crawl out of the Sarlacc pit. The second episode was by far the best so far. It was longer, had more action, and more story, as we got introduced to some new faces including the Hutt Twins and the Black Kersantan. And then the third episode, which, though it was a bit unorthodox, really did hit home. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry, hold on. It really did a good job of showing the emotional... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just, I can't, I can't say that with a straight face. This, this episode sucked. And the thing is, it really didn't have to. We first have to address the elephant in the room, which is, of course, the Among Us biker gang that showed up. Like, Jesus, these guys look like Cyberpunk just had a baby with David Bowie and it threw up all over my Star Wars content. And the thing was, the introduction to this group was great. When this guy is describing the gang to Boba Fett, he talks about how they replace parts of their bodies with mechanical parts to make them more advanced, and I thought that that was sick! But this is Tatooine, so I was expecting something like these guys to show up. But instead, we got this rainbow-painted British boy band. And the other thing is, these guys could fit into Star Wars on a planet like Coruscant or Ord Mantell. But Tatooine? Come on, Favaro, you're better than this. And then we have a short little dream sequence, which was cool, and we got to see the Tuscans get killed, which was sad, except for the female warrior, so we might be seeing more of her later. And then Boba gets woken up by Black Chrysanthemum. And I'm getting really pumped at this point because I'm thinking about how cool this is gonna be, and he loses immediately. Doesn't kill a single person. He bites a few people, but uh, that's about it. Then they trap him in the pit, and where's Boba? Getting his robe on! No weapon, no armor, he just needs to throw on a bath towel. And then the twins come back, and oh wait, no, they're leaving. One episode after they were introduced. And then Boba gets a Rancor, which is really cool, I like it. And then he frees Black Chrysanthemum, but I'm sure we'll see more of him. And then finally, we get to what is undoubtedly the most incredibly important scene in this whole episode. The Back to the Future car chase, taken almost directly from the movie that went on five freaking minutes! Just for Boba to jetpack down in the end, anyway. I mean, good god, that sucked. Now, I did a theory on the Book of Boba Fett where I thought he might be tracking down all his previous foes for revenge, and it seems like I might almost be right. If he's planning on fighting the Pikes, then that would definitely be a revenge mission. But hopefully some more badassery starts happening soon, because this show is starting to get really, really slow. Next on our list, we have Halo Infinite. Now, personally, I have not finished the campaign yet, so I don't know how it ends, and I don't want any spoilers, so don't tell me, please. But I'll tell you what I think of the game so far. This game is phenomenal. Gameplay-wise, it's nearly flawless. You feel powerful, but still need precision. Health is very easy to manage. The weapons are just so satisfying. The enemies are interesting and exciting to fight, and it's very diverse. And the grapple hook is just pure dopamine. The map is huge and expansive, and the detail is just incredible, not to mention the graphics are beautiful. And the boss fights that you encounter actually feel like skill-based boss fights. Gameplay is just phenomenal, no complaints there. And the story? Absolutely beautiful so far. I just got to the part where, um, spoilers by the way, where Chief tries to delete weapon and she gets all pissed off at him. And at this point, I love the story, mainly because it feels like they completely ignored the ending of Halo 5 and went straight from Halo 4 to Infinite, which feels so much better. 
I love the villains. The motive from the Banished just feels natural and also makes a lot of callbacks to the earlier games. Now, my theory so far is that Master Chief's story will come to a close. Somehow they seem to be hinting that he will die due to all the dead Spartans you find lying around and how Cortana keeps seductively whispering to you about how you might die. Obviously, we'll beat the shit out of the Banished first, and probably find out that Cortana is still alive somehow, but seriously guys, this game is so much fun and might be one of my favorite of the series so far. Spider-Man No Way Home delivered everything we wanted and more. Seeing Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield come back as Spider-Man was just so good. So good. Not to mention all the glorious memes. Seeing all the villains come back and their interactions with each other were great and really funny too. But am I the only one that kind of agreed with Doctor Strange the whole time? I mean, Peter did break the multiverse and was forced to erase his identity from his universe just because he wanted to save five not so great people. And he didn't even do that. He didn't save Sandman because he didn't die fighting Spider-Man. He didn't save Doc Ock because he sacrificed himself to save everyone in the end anyway. He doesn't save the Lizard because he didn't die fighting Spider-Man either. He was cured in the end and sent to prison. The only two people that he might have saved are Green Goblin and Electro, so good job, Pete! But that's really my only criticism of the movie is because everything else was great. And now it is set up Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, where Mordo is finally coming back and we could see some major Scarlet Witch action which I am always down for. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, I have to be honest, was a huge disappointment for me. I agree with Markiplier's description of it. It feels like there was a different game in place originally. There were even things in the trailer that didn't appear in the game, like Monty's threatening monologue. You will do as I say. You will bring me what I want. And if you fail me, then you will both of you burn and the elevator scene where we see Vanessa looking at us through it. And some people feel that they might have changed many things because Scott left, and that would make sense, but they still put him in the credits, and Steel Wool didn't turn on Scott like many others did, so I'm not sure if that's it. In terms of story, it just seems a bit stale at this point. Oh my god, Afton's alive? <gasps> Do you see me fucking laughing? Also, the big threat, the big baddie of this new era of FNAF, Vanny, only appears in the actual game around three or four times. But I will say that in a previous theory, I was right about the possibility that we could save Vanny, and that does happen in one of the endings, so points for me, I guess. But even if you put the discrepancies that I have with the story behind, the game is utterly broken. Bugs and exploits can, at times, make the game unplayable, and the scale of the game, though impressive from a world-building standpoint, is convoluted and confusing. Also, that bull part of the game where you decide to stay and you can't save for the entire time no matter what amount of progress you made is utterly ridiculous. Of course, we got some good things out of it. Music man! Music man! Music man! Music man! Music man! But overall, crap game. Really crap. And finally, we have Batman. And I cannot express to you guys how excited I am for this movie to come out. When I saw the trailer for this movie, I felt the nostalgic grit and darkness that came with the legendary Dark Knight series. The dark themes and colors, the uncomfortable camera angles, and the badass fight scenes made me squeal with utter joy. I think DC finally got the hint that we don't want flashy colors and oversaturated fight scenes, and I have high hopes that this will deliver. I am slightly concerned that Cedric Diggory went from being a vampire to Batman seems a bit on the nose for me, but I could not be happier with what I've seen so far. It seems we'll be getting appearances from the Riddler, the Penguin, and Catwoman, as well as some version of the Joker's goons, which I have a feeling might be the setup for the next movie that they have in mind, since this movie seems to be heavily focused on the Riddler. The Joker goons seem a bit out of place, unless it could be tied into a sequel. And before I end this video, it's time for another installment of Tiny Talk. 
Today's tiny talk is about Star Wars Battlefront 2, which I recently did a video on for my 100 subscriber special. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Battlefront 2 has been completely abandoned by EA, and Battlefront 3 was also shut down. This chain of events sparked a hacker empire within the PC Battlefront 2 player base. But just when all hope seemed lost, the modding community came to save the day. Private servers, new heroes with custom abilities, new game modes. It works. And it has anti-cheat and a report system. The love that fans have for this game is incredible. Such a shame that our Disney overlords just can't see it. But with that, Thanks for watching! Please check out my Discord in the link in the description for funny memes and updates on future content. And I'll see you nerds in the next video! Nerd out!